In this video, we're going to look at some elementary consequences that can be derived from the axioms defining a vector space. This shows one of the advantages of working in the more abstract setting of a vector space. Anything that we can show follows from the general axioms of a vector space we know will be true in any vector space. Thus, we don't have to prove it separately in the case of Rn, in the case of matrices, in the case of vector spaces of functions. We can just show it in general from the axioms of a vector space, and then we know that it's true in any particular example of a vector space. So let me give you some idea of what I mean. For example, we can show that the zero element in a vector space is unique. You can't have two distinct zero elements. Also, in any vector space, the scalar zero times any element uh, in the vector space is the zero element. So this is something, of course, we know is true in Rn. If we take any vector and multiply it by zero, we obtain the all zero vector. But that's actually something that holds true in general in any vector space. Finally, a very useful property is that if we start with the zero element and we multiply it by any scalar, we're still going to have the zero element. Again, in Rn, this is kind of an obvious fact. If we have the all zero vector and multiply it by, by some scalar, it stays the all zero vector. But it's nice to know that this follows only from the definition of a vector space. So this is something that will be true in any vector space. And it's useful for us to kind of build up these elementary operations so that when we start to talk about things like linear independence and more complex manipulations with vector spaces, we'll have some tools that we'll be able to use. So let's go ahead and see how you prove these type of properties. Let's see how to show that the zero element is unique. So suppose that V contains two zero elements, 0, 1, and 0, 2. Now what does it mean to be a zero element in V? It means that for any element x in V, x plus 0, 1 is just equal to x. That's what it means for 0, 1 to be a zero element of V. Now if 0, 2 is a zero element of V as well, then x plus 0, 2 is also equal to x for any element x in V. Now we can play a little trick. We can look at the sum of 0, 1 plus 0, 2. Now, by the second property, this tells us that this must be equal to 0, 1. On the other hand, remember that one of the properties of a vector space is that addition of vectors is commutative. So 0, 1 plus 0, 2 is going to be equal to 0, 2 plus 0, 1. And now we can use the first property to see that this is going to be equal to 0, 2. So therefore we have that 0, 1 is equal to 0, 2. So these are in fact the same element. That's why the 0 element of a vector space must be unique. If we had two 0 elements, they have to be the same. Now let's look at the statement that for any element x of a vector space, the scalar 0 times x is equal to the all 0 vector. So to prove this, we can start off with the property of a vector space, the existence of negatives. So we know that for any element x in a vector space, there is a negative of x, which when added to x is the zero element. From here, we can use the distributivity property. So x plus minus 1 times x is really equal to 1 plus minus 1 times x. But now 1 plus minus 1, well, that's just the scalar 0. So this is equal to 0 times x. 
So now we have that 0 times x is equal to the 0 element, which is what we wanted to show. Finally, let's take the property that any scalar times the 0 element is just the 0 element. So this is again quite a useful property. We've used this all the time in the case of Rn. And now let's see why this is true in any vector space. So this one is a little bit trickier to prove. So I'm going to start off with the claim that if it holds that x plus x is equal to x, then it must be the case that x is the zero element. Now let's see why this is true. Let's start out with the sum x plus x minus x. Now if I look first at x minus x, that's of course just the zero element by existence of negatives. So that means that this is x plus zero, which is just x. But by associativity, this is also going to be equal to, if I group the terms in another way, like this. And now I can use the fact, my hypothesis, that x plus x is equal to x. So this here is just x. So really we have x minus x, which again, by existence of negatives, is the zero element. So now we have that x is equal to the zero element. Now with this claim in hand, let's prove what we wanted to show that a times the zero element is equal to the zero element. So let's call a times the zero element x. And let's look at x plus x. Well, this is a times zero plus a times zero. Now we can again use distributivity so this is equal to a times 0 plus 0. But now 0 plus anything is just the 0 element again. So this is the 0 element. So this is equal to a times 0, which is equal to x. So in this case, where x is a times 0, we've shown that x plus x is equal to x. Therefore, x must be equal to 0. So a times 0 must be equal to zero. And now we're done.